What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me today. So I'm going to say it real quick, and I hate when you... Uh, All right, we'll start again. Thank you for joining me today, okay? I'm going to talk about real quick the market and the market direction, because that's what we all give a shit about going into tomorrow. So what did we see at the end of the day? Let me just show... Let me just see where we ended up here. Okay, so uh, same thing as yesterday, same thing as the day before. The market attempts to sell off and, and become rational, and then people keep buying and keep people keep buying. So two facts real quick, and then I'll get into uh, today's lessons. All right, two quick uh, facts. Number one, um, the investments in the market, the inflow in the market in July and August of last year. Now, remember, everybody was home, out of work, working from home, whatever it is. More investments in the market was $10 billion this year. Okay, now more people are back to work. More companies are open. More things are open out there. $23 billion. So $10 billion versus $23 billion. That's why we're at all-time highs. Investors from the outside are saying, this is my chance. I want in, and I want in at these prices. So yes, we rational people take a look at some stocks, and we're like, are they crazy? The valuation is ridiculous, but that's not how we trade. We trade by, here we go, I'm going to say it, I'm on fire, okay? We trade by being on fire. We secure profit. 24 out of my last 26 trades are profitable. Now, which two am I going to talk about? The two losers. I lost on the SPY puts because things are all profitable. And I lost on PINs puts because the market's going higher. But everything else is going up. I've been making money, securing, locking down profit. I'm going to tell you why YouTube's so important. And I tell my platform why YouTube's so important. Yesterday, I took one position into today. I said Goldman Sachs will be 417 and change at some point. I anticipate a 1% increase in the stock price to take Goldman Sachs to 417 and change. So when Goldman Sachs hit 417 and 50 cents, my calls got triggered. I secured max profit. Did I know I was calling almost the top today? No, I was taking profit. Carnival Cruise Line, CCL, it dipped at the open and then strengthened. I made 35%. I could have made 44%. UVXY. I sold. I had calls today. I thought it was going to spike. I sold at 14%. It was dangerous. So 14%. I wasn't greedy. I didn't want to hold it all day thinking the markets would shit on themselves or at least rooting for the markets to shit on themselves. But you know what? UVXY spiked even higher. I could have claimed like 50%. Okay, here's another one. Funny one. Uh, TTD, right? I got in that one. It was uh, 78.50. I said I loved it. It dropped to 78, like 18. All right. Everybody else got in 10% better. And then it spiked. It went over, uh, what, $79 and like 20 cents. I got out with 25% profit. Now, what's funny is I was texting the lifetime member saying, hey, do you see that spike? Where do we think TTD is going to? Should I reset my ask and maybe get a little more money? So when I tell you guys, you know, don't get greedy. If I had got greedy, I probably would have lost out on that trade. All right. Now, other trades that I just predominantly mentioned on YouTube. So you want to know, like, why I'm on fire? Edit, edit cross 71 today. SoFi, S O F I, cross $15 today. APPH spikes every morning and then you get out. APPS, um, it's back above what, $70 again? Nano, plug, PXD, Alibaba, ride, Tesla a few times, Roblox, BBIG. Now, the great thing about BBIG is to me, it's just settling. It's not even started its fun yet. So I only have 2,000 shares yet because I took profit yesterday, but I bought 2,000 shares uh, again at I think like $8 and maybe 98 cents or something like that. I think it's like $8 right now, but I'm confident I'm going to make money. What else? Fastly. Fastly went up 7%, then 5%, then another 4% today. FSLY. So I know tech doesn't look strong, but Fastly is strong. So it's still a stock picker's market. So the same way I used to come in here and talk about certain stocks, I'm going to continue to do that. Um, Cryoport, right? That was one, I, I think it's getting close to 70 right now. Ebon, TDOC, GLD, Coin, Tiger, whatever. I could go on and on about recent winners. But to be a winner, now here we go into the lesson part, okay? So everybody clear their heads. Now think straight. These are all important points. I'm going to take them real slow. To be a winner, first off, you have to have a winning mentality. You go into each day of trading thinking you're going to lose, and you'll be a loser. So to be a winner. You have your money on the side. You enter into a trade the same way we all do. You're looking for the best entry. You must have strategy and know what your exit is. So when you buy something for $49 a contract, you say to yourself, I'd like to make, um, I don't know, 40%. So that would be about 20 cents. I'll sell it for $69 a contract. You don't watch. If you get greedy, you miss out and you ride the elevator. I've talked about riding the elevator many times. Okay. So 
Another quick lesson. Um, old school, carry a notebook. Write down the good things that you do. Write down the bad things that you do. Okay? Look at them over and over. You'll notice the good things. You'll be like, oh, it's really good when I plan ahead. Oh, it's really good when I execute. Oh, it's really good. It's bad when I follow the stock and I trade with emotion. I missed out. I sold too soon. I did whatever it is. Do that. Next, cash account. You must have multiple accounts. I don't care if you have $200 here, $300 here. I opened up two more E-Trade accounts on Monday. I put $900 in each one. Now, this is a great story. I was going to get to this a little later, but I'll get to it earlier. Okay. So two accounts, $900 each on E-Trade Monday. Now, I traded the same stocks throughout the week. Okay. But here's how I did it. One account, I was like, okay, I'm going to enter at this point, 60 cents a contract, and I'm going to watch it and try and get the best exit strategy. The other account, I said, I'm going to enter at 60 cents a contract, and I'm going to sell for 30% gain. I'll sell at 78. So I basically turned off, you know, and didn't worry about it. I just waited for my phone to ding, and then I moved on to the next trade. So I was more emotional in one account. I was just planned in the other account. Guess which account did better? No shit. I have two accounts. Guess which account did better? The one where I didn't give a shit where I planned in advance and I'm like, I'm going to buy this at $2. I'll sell it at three fifty dollars if it hits three fifty. dollars If not, I'll think about it tomorrow. The account that I was worrying about, and I was like, I bought it at $2, sold it at two eighty, dollars tried to buy it at two fifty, dollars missed out, tried to go into another stock, and I was more actively trading. It was 25% lower than the other account. Now, the other account made 140%, all right? So I crushed it both ways. But the emotional trading, all right, the guy who was looking to try and get into every trade, I'm like, all right, what can I do next? Well, it was like a challenge. I was going to beat the simple trading account that I set up with, with the planned trading alerts for the, for the day. I was going to beat it by being smarter than it, by being more active, by being actively watching the market. And I was 25% after four days lower. That account made 130 or 140%, 139%. And this account made 25% less. So the point is, when I tell you to plan ahead, when I tell you, as soon as you buy something for 50 cents, set your ass for 70 cents. That's 40%. Don't watch. If you get a shitty entry, say you pay a dollar and it goes down to 50 cents and you're like, I'm not even going to average down. But you have to think like if it's from 50 cents and it's going to go up 100%, that would be a dollar again. So your break even would be 100% gain from where it is. So you think to yourself, is that shit going up 100%? Probably not. I should probably average down, get my average to 75, and then get the hell out when it turns to 75. All right? There are different strategies, but you have to stay active. All right? So that was the main lesson there. A um, couple more lessons. All right. Yeah. I said the, I wrote the last best fucking lesson. All right. I opened up two accounts. That's what I just said. I mean, I'm obviously not reading this shit. Okay. So here it is. Be a winner. I don't care if you have $100, $100,000. You must have a strategy. You must know the dips that you're looking at. You must plan ahead. If the option's at $220 and you say, I want 20% discount, you put it in for $1.80. When it executes for $1.80, I'm just using another example. You're like, okay, 30% is $0.54. Cents. I'll sell it for $2.34. That's 30%. We don't care. Okay. Now, the results, the patient account, the one that I didn't look at, crushed it. All right. So long holiday weekend, by the way, I'm not on YouTube tomorrow. Um, there will be a long holiday weekend. There's no Monday. I will be back on Tuesday. I want to get to questions today. I promise at least 20 minutes. So no slides ever again. I guess people like that. Um, I've got this great goatee going on. Let's get to some questions, Carlos. Oh, and everybody, please, if you're watching and you're getting good information out of this and you're learning shit to make you a more effective trader, number one, that is the goal. So I appreciate that. Please share that. Share it with somebody. Share the video with someone. If you like what you're seeing, hit the like button down there. Subscribe to uh, YouTube, which is free. Subscribe to the platform, which isn't free. It's $3.49 a week, which is like, what, 50 cents a day. All right, Ryan, let's see. Shout out to the 349 fan. Sophie, you came in strong today after hearing it yesterday on the platform. You had 100 calls. Oh, yeah, great. So you made 1500 bucks. That's awesome. And your investment was $600. So you probably have the strategy that I'll put in $600. If I lose, it goes down to three cents. I'll sell. And if it goes up, I'll watch it. And when I think it's a good time, 19, 20, 21 cents, you're out. Let's look at your return on that. Your return, if you made 15 cents, you actually profited 250%. So you profited 250% from that alert. That's awesome, Ryan. I like in the money options. Let's go to another question, please. Hey, Matt, what do I say about BBEG? Okay. 
So here's the thing. You could look at the one month chart. Okay. This is a meme stock. It won't go straight up. It's not completely ridiculous. Some people think it has good standing like long term. So today was an outflow day. Today, people were selling. So when BBIG goes to, let's just give you a fair answer on the question, right? BBIG is what? off? Uh, it's $8. They did some type of offering at $9 where it's like a private placement offering. I think they're selling 20 million shares at $9 to an investment or a hedge fund or a private placement or a holding house. Um, so I think it's going to consolidate. People need to digest that. So it doesn't surprise me that it's down to eight. It probably went to what? 755 today. Let's see. 790. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's consolidating. Um, but if I look at the one month chart, man, it's volume was super light today. Yesterday it was 300 million. Today it was 105 million. So the people that bought are holding, there were a ton of call options. I look at the flow charts. So the flow on B big was strong at the end of the day, but especially here we go. Stock you did not mention, um, was support S P R T support.com. I know it got thrashed for like two days straight, but you know what? The big buying on call options came in at the end of the day. So yes, I like B big. I like support the other meme stocks. I don't want to talk about AMC GameStop. They've had their fun. We've moved on. We're talking about new ones. All right, let's get another question up there. Okay. Alvaro, you're here already. After two weeks of struggling today, you did four trades. All four trades are profitable. That's awesome. Who cares about make money? You average 15% on all of them. That's a killer investment. Let's say all of your trades are like 800 bucks. Okay. 15% is $120 per trade. If you make four trades for $120, you're making 480 on the day, right? And your limit, your risk is limited because it's $800 a time. 800, 800, 800, 800. Point is you're limiting your risk. You're not in them all at the same time. So that's great, bro. If you can make $500 a day, and you could prove it to yourself tomorrow using the same strategy. And the next day using the same strategy, Monday, Tuesday, whatever it is, the next trading day. Point is, do it five days in a row. That's what I tell you the test is. If you tell yourself you're going to make 500 or or 1,000 or whatever the goal is for the day, I tell you, do it five days in a row. Prove to me that you could trade five days in a row. Once you do that, you're going to understand the light bulb will go off. Let's get another question. That was a good job, bro. All right, you traded BTCM options and now you left some running. What are my thoughts on this stock? So again, I laugh here because we have a lifetime members and we have like a hundred people in the lifetime chat. There are a hundred lifetime members, part of my platform. And they were talking about this stock and they were talking about it this morning and they were talking about it yesterday. And there's another one, BTCM and there was BLCM or something like that. But I think this one popped. I don't, I don't watch it because I don't necessarily like these kind of plays. But this is right. Bitcoin mining, huge inflow today. Um, market caps up to 775. It's up 35%. I mean, shares outstanding. I, I get it. I get it. It's an easy company to push. I, I don't know. Um, people on my platform say it's going to at least 15, um, those lifetime members. But I don't know. Yeah, 15 would be great if you're there. What is it? 1227 after hours. So two hours and 80, another 35% tomorrow. It could definitely run. Um, you need the markets to be strong if they throw up on themselves, which it doesn't look. Oh, let's talk about market strength real quick. So for everybody here, I've been talking about how strong the market is and when is it actually going to sell off or when may it get weak? So this is the light bulb moment right here. We have CPI, consumer price number index numbers coming out on Wednesday, okay? Then we have jobs numbers. I know there are jobs coming in tomorrow, but supposedly that shit's outdated. So you go out till next Friday where there are other um, numbers coming in. So next Wednesday and next Friday. And basically, if the numbers come in strong, which they should, the Fed should start tapering ASAP. If the Fed comes out and says, we're going to start tapering, then the markets will go down and readjust. Point is, we still have another week to run. If it's not four days, it's four out of five days. It's three out of five days. It's still a bullish market. All right, let's get another question, please. Another bullish question. What the hell am I saying? Dude, I need to grab a drink on you. You sold TTD. Uh, yes. So TTD was another trade I got into today. So again, it dipped. I called the entry. I said, I'm paying $1.55, $1.50 for the same options here, $1.50, $1.55. And then what happened? I think it went to like $1.30, $1.25. I mean, it just took a shit on itself after I said I liked it, which is the 10-minute rule. Now, the great thing is, after it was done taking a shit, it bounced back strong. It went up like a full dollar. I got a dollar ninety because I said that's what I'm setting my uh, 
my ask for $1.90, which gave me 25%. I'm not a greedy SOB, but I like money. So excellent, Don. I'll grab a drink on you, bro. Here it is. All right, let's get another question. All right, Voodoo Chicken, let's see what we got. You preaching my guy? That's awesome, man. So I really, I really like that. I like when people give me thumbs up. Okay, so if like 200 people watch and I get 200 thumbs up, I'm like in heaven. That's ecstatic for me, all right? The point is, if you're watching and you like this, please, it's right there someplace. Just click the thumbs up. That's the appreciation I need. You can tell me it's good, but thumbs up or comment like you, whatever it is, you made whatever it is. Um, I don't want to put comments in your mouth. All right, HRL, Hormel Foods. I do not, I know what they are, but I don't know their chart. And it looks like it took a shit on itself today. Wow, I mean, it threw up on itself. There was heavy, heavy buying at the end of the day. So this looks like one of these companies where they probably had mixed earnings. Uh, the company took a dump on itself. And then people say, oh, is this the bottom? Let me buy in. So understand for $1 or $2 gain the next day. Yeah, I mean, you could probably know this will probably bounce up to, I'll tell you exactly what it'll bounce up to. It'll bounce up to uh, 44.57. So yeah, you could probably get a one dollar gain on this one, probably overnight, actually, or, or into tomorrow. Yeah. So if you have 100 shares, take that 100 bucks, bro. Call it a trade. If it doesn't make it to 100, 80 dollars is good profit too. You call it a trade. You move on. That's what we do. We trade without emotion. Let's get to another question. I want to see if I can answer more stocks. Okay. Ah, uh, QS, bro. QS. Yeah. So I've been talking about QS for a while. Huge support. Now, Atos. I don't like that one. So that one's on you. Um, QS, I'll definitely take some credit for that one. But those are two good calls, I guess. I haven't checked out Atos for a while. But I know that shit got beat up from like $6 or 7 all the way to like 3 maybe even 2 something. But yeah, in and out. Sophie calls from yesterday. Got you 100% today. Yeah, so when the market opened up and looked like shit, we weren't selling. Why? Because we know exactly what we're looking for out of our contracts. Now, if I had held my contracts, I took 88% yesterday. If I had held them... I could have got clear over 100%, but I'm in and out and in and out. All right, next one, please. Hey, can we rinse and repeat on Carnival? So Carnival seems to do some crazy shit every day, right? Liked it yesterday. I liked it the day before. Got in, got out, because it, it opens up. It spikes up in the morning. So I got in at that night. I got out the next morning. Yesterday, I got in. I got um, out this morning, probably too early on Carnival. But it was, it was like $24.41. I mean, is that the high for the day? Because that was pretty damn high. I mean, I mean, how, how high is Carnival going? Oh, 24.47. So I got pretty darn close. It closed at 24. You just got to look at the chart. Um, Right now, it looks like, oh, here's the thing about the Dow. Yeah, Carnival is going to step and repeat. It's going to go higher. The Dow stocks are going to go higher because the Delta variant is finally going down and uh, consolidating, let's say. So I'm a bigger fan of the Dow going forward. I think interest rates will go up. I think tech will struggle a little more. I think the SPY will continue to reach all-time highs at least for another one, two, three days. And then we'll see where we're at. Another question, please. Okay, you took lots of losses last month. At least 90% of your trades were losses. Okay, now you haven't traded in a week and you're not confident in any trades. Okay, there are a lot of people that feel like this and I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, what you do is you start over. You look at your notebook and you and you read. Uh, no, you shouldn't stop trading. You should start over. Whatever you learned or taught yourself, you 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 somehow got off track. So here it is. Take the notebook out. Go over the lessons. I tell you, enter into one contract. So you're watching it as whatever stock is dipping. Let's say Carnival is dipping tomorrow morning down 50 cents to 23.50. You're looking at a call option that expires one or two weeks out. And you say to yourself, if it dips, it could dip another 20 cents. If it dips another 20 cents, the contract I'm going to buy will be $90 instead of 100. So let me put in for $89 or $88. And then when it gets executed, you say to yourself, Chris, all right, I don't really care. I'm going to turn off my computer. I'm going to look for $1.27. I'm going to make 38%. So you put in for $1.27 and you go paint or you go for a walk or you play with your dogs. And when you get back that afternoon, your computer says, hey, you sold it for $1.37. And you say to yourself, I wasn't even around and I just made 37%. And then the light bulb moment goes off. Don't break the rules. Don't be too smart for your own good. Don't think that you can call the market and Wall Street. If Wall Street knew where the market direction was going, they would even crush it harder. Okay. 
I decipher through the information that I read and I give you the psychology behind trading to tell you what the directions of the market are and what the possibilities are. But if they knew that, and I don't understand why they don't, they have so much goddamn money. All right, let's go on to another question, please. But you should still trade, bro. All right, Matt, you secured profit. Your Sophie profit, $14 calls. Yeah, that's the one I had. Your average was 59 cents. My average was 49 cents. You got out at 83 cents. I got out at 88 cents. You could have received more, but you're two for two with your Sophie. All right, re-enter. What's my position? My position is I hate the stock because Kramer likes it. However, the chart is strong. So if it if it drops, sure. Now, here's the thing, Ellie, right? You have to predict it. So you say to yourself, yesterday, Matt got $88. Today, I should get at least $88. It's looking stronger than yesterday. So you probably should have asked for like a full dollar on that one. And when it hit 15, you would have got it. So you can use, and Ellie's a lifetime member, but she can use my experience and my comments of making 88% to figure out that she should get 20 more percent than I did or 10 more percent. It's the same way when I enter into a trade and I pay 360 and you guys pay $3 because you want a 20% discount. All right, let's get another question, man. Ryan made the prediction of Sophie last night. It would hit 15 today. Got the morning dip, was convinced the prediction, made a plan, execute, follow the rules. Dude, that is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to use that 10 plus the other five from before, and it's pizza and beer for everybody. All right, let's get another one. Okay, what do I think of CVS, Walmart, grocery, blah, 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 blah. All right, so um, I can look at CVS. I think we have one of our members just keeps mentioning CVS over and over. So I don't know if it's you, but the person mentions that he kills it every time. The one-month chart of CVS looks great. I know the Walgreens chart looks great too because I've suggested that one at $45 and $46, and it hit $49. Once um, Walgreens hits over $50, it's just going to go off to the races, $52, $55. CVS is probably going to push. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to push higher. It might contract one or two days, but I'm thinking tomorrow you're probably going to get $89. So I would sell tomorrow, wait for it to pull back to $87 on like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, and then I would do it again by the same position. All right, let's get another one. SHW is a beast, but moves slowly. It's not on my watch list because I don't know what it is. I would call it Showboat or something. Sherwin-Williams. Oh, the paint store. Yeah, I mean, it moves real slow. And I've, I've seen this one before. And there have been alerts about this one from other people. I, I'm not a fan. It moves too slow. I need instant gratification. That's why my options tend to expire this week. All right, another question, please. Chart looks great, though. Google finally had a bad day, almost 1%. I'm expecting more selling tomorrow. Yes, so David, factor that in to what my prediction is. My prediction is the Dow is stronger than the NASDAQ right now. So when they battle it out, the Dow is going to win. SPY is going to win. The NASDAQ is going to go down a little bit. Now, the NASDAQ has been strong for a while. So once we know COVID and the Delta variant is like not so prevalent and the numbers are going down here in Florida, where we're like the capital mega center, um, we're entering school started. There aren't major outbreaks. Not that I'm hearing about on the news. Um, there are some natural disasters, but I think the Dow is stronger. So, yes, Google can retract. But understand, Google is like your number one stock in the NASDAQ. OK. So even when it's pulling back, it's not going to have terrible days because institutions want to be in Google for the long run. They make a lot of money. All right, another question, please. All right. <clears throat> All right, Keaton, you usually trade a few contracts at a time. You're probably replying to the dude that said he had 100 contracts, right? I've had up to like 1,200 and like 80-something contracts, 86, I think it was, on the UVXY. And yeah. That's a lot of damn contracts. And the other times I've had contracts on Netflix and AMD, I literally lost about 60 grand because I was so positive going into earnings and got crushed twice last year. So you have to trade without emotion, meaning, Keaton, you enter into a, uh, a position and you say to yourself, I'm going to buy this at $1.20. It's now $1.50. I'm only going to buy it on sale at $1.20. And when I buy it at $1.20, I think it's going to go up to $1.80. And that's it, bro. Just turn it off. You trade without emotion. If you have one contract, if you have a hundred contracts, it doesn't change your outcome or the way you're thinking about the stock. All right. Next one, please. All right. Thoughts on the market tomorrow. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if I was going to guess, I would say Dow, SPY, green, NASDAQ, potentially red, um, or Dow, SPY, strong plus a hundred NASDAQ plus 28, but more likely you'll see the NASDAQ off 40 points. And you'll see the Dow plus, uh, I don't know, 99 points sounds good. 
Remember, we're going into a holiday weekend. All right, let's do another question, please. All right. Yes, everybody, press that like button. That would be great. Everything's analytics. Um, I appreciate you all watching. I mean, this is great. I know some of you, and we had Mike's video on yesterday, and he was like, he's an older gentleman. He's like, he's an options beast, and I love that shit, man. You can see how excited he was, and then he feels that he owns options now. He gets it. He understands how to make profit. He had the light bulb moment, and he's telling all of us. He's like, you stupid fuck. I mean, whatever it is. He's telling us, this is what it is. Dude, look at me. First off, Mike, you should not be driving without your hands, bro. The first thing I'm, I'm watching your video, I'm like, dude, he's driving, right? And then you're talking with your hands, and both hands are up, and he's like, I'm a beast. And I'm like, I'm expecting the car to start, but then people are passing him. So I'm like, maybe he's only going five miles an hour. I don't know. All right. Hey, Matt, China like to screw up the market over the holidays. Yes, they did that to us July uh, 4th, 5th. So here's the ironic thing about China, and I did a little video clip on this earlier, all right? China is creating a new exchange in China, in Beijing. It's for small and medium cap Chinese company and probably Asian company. I mean, they'll probably welcome Singapore, companies from Singapore, Thailand, but whatever it is, they're opening up an exchange so they can make money and have control of all the information. Isn't that capitalistic? China is supposedly not about capitalism, right? So how ironic is that shit? Hey, China's screwing up. We'll see what China does. All my money will be on the sidelines. I only day trade options now. I have a ton of stocks, right? But I only day trade options and I'm in and out and I'm securing profit. And remember, I used to talk about, hey, I made 100%. I made 80%, 100%. Now I'm making 28%, 44%, 45%. I don't kill it, but that shit adds up. I want to be a winning trader. And that's what the light bulb the other day. So I've been talking about this a lot since last Thursday. I tell you, winning mentality. If you can be one for one on the day, right? Why do you need to enter another trade? You don't. You enter in a trade. You make 200 bucks. You feel good about yourself. You go out for a jog. You go to the beach. You go for a run. You go do your real job. You're a school teacher. Whatever it is, you take care of your kids. Your, your husband is cooking dinner for you. Whatever it is, that's the point. You call yourself a winner. You do that shit day after day. Then you start talking about people. I crushed the market. Oh, you do? How much money do you make? I don't know. I've hit my last 18 straight trades. I mean, we have a lifetime member. 18 out of 19. I'm 24 out of my last 26 trades. Or actually 25 out of 27 now. All right. AXP. Um, it's going to be a Dow stock. It's going to be a financial stock, which financial stocks have been beaten up. As interest rates go down, financial stocks struggle. So everybody, please do me a favor. You're watching this. If you like this shit, refer it out to somebody. Be like, hey, I'm part of this platform. You don't have to join, but you should watch this dude on YouTube. Or if you're on social media, post it on your Facebook. Post the link of the video. That's how you're going to pay me back. That's how you're going to pay it forward. You should be like, I've killed it four days in a row. Watch this dude's video. That's all I'm asking. I'm hoping the right eyes get on the video and we get, and we just grow the family. I mean, nobody really leaves the family. It's, it's like we lose like one, two, three, maybe like four a week. And, and the, we're gaining like 20, 40 members. We're just not blowing up. And I think everybody needs to learn. So AXP. Um, it does a head and shoulders effect. It's definitely going down right now. I would stay the hell away from this stock, at least until it goes to 160 flat, which it hasn't. It went to 161 today. So I definitely think it could hit like under 160 flat, probably 159 and change. So you might have your opportunity, maybe Monday, I mean, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Friday, but I wouldn't enter into it yet. I'd stay away from it unless you're playing puts. All right, Facebook calls. Uh, it's interesting. You could trade Facebook. I wouldn't say Facebook's a long-termer, but I would tell you on a daily basis that there are spikes on Facebook. So you buy puts on the spike or you buy calls on when it, when it dips. However, remember, going forward, I think tech will struggle a little more. I do really like Facebook, so that's why I'm like not really sure. So let me look at the five-day and then I'll break down the one-day. All right, so now I'm looking at the one-day. Yeah, I mean, you can go off the spike on the open and then... Uh, for instance, they were they were buying into the close today. So if it dips tomorrow morning, say you get a dip down to, uh, I don't know, 374. Actually, I would stay away from Facebook. I would stay away from Facebook. If it dips tomorrow morning and you think you're getting a steal and it dips harder because tech struggles, you have to remember, I just told you, I think tech might struggle tomorrow. So I wouldn't be in Facebook calls. So there's no need to look that up. I've done that before. I've told someone to buy a dip on a stock and then I've done it myself with plug like a bunch of weeks ago, I said, stay the F away from four letter stocks. I made a video and then I said, I'm going to buy a plug real cheap today. And I bought plug real cheap. And then I ended up with 188 contracts 
and I had to wait a full day and a half, including the weekend, to secure 77%, whereas I could have blown up my account. So yeah, please just stay away from, from tech-related stocks right now. I think Dow is going to be stronger right now. I own sand stock. Do you think it will go over $8 soon or not? I don't know. That's a good question, man. I appreciate the directness, Lloyd. Uh, Sandstorm gold. Okay. So, I mean, you're going to follow gold prices. Do I think it's going over? There's your question. Gold's at $1,815 right now. Do you think gold is going to $1,900? And if you do, why? If you tell me because the government's printing money or because of inflation or some shit like that, then I'll tell you, yeah, gold can go to $1,900 or $2,000. But right now, I don't see it. I actually trade gold because it's pretty violent and one day it goes up and down by like $10 or $20. So when it's down by $20, I'm buying gold ETFs. When it's up by $20, I'm buying puts. So I think it'll settle down. So no, I don't like gold stocks right now. I think it's more of a day trade. All right, unless you, unless you think gold's going up, but I'd rather be in a crypto play than gold right now. All right, next question. Hey, yes, thank you for asking. So SPRT support. Again, I don't really follow this stock. It's a meme stock. However, a few minutes before the bell closed at 3.57 p.m., there was crazy option activity on SPRT. Now, it doesn't make me think they're going to do manipulation after hours. It makes me think that they're going to do something crazy tomorrow. Now, here's the thing. Alex, who I've mentioned before for my lifetime members, mentioned there is a rule going into effect tomorrow where short sellers now have to require more margin. So if they're requiring more margin, then they can't short as much, or at least they need more capital. The point is, he believes that there will be more short squeezing. I saw the action on this stock, the call action, right before the market closed, and it looked damn good. So I don't know. I'm watching tomorrow morning. If there's a dip, I'll be buying. I'll tell you that much. Listen, everybody, I appreciate you guys watching. This is going to be the last question. Um, you guys are great today. Thank you so much. Again, have a wonderful weekend. Um, people not on my platform, people on my platform, you get to see my ugly mug tomorrow. Uh, let's look at view. The five day on view looks super sick, um, but volume is super light since they went down to $4. But it looks like one of those charts where they threw up on it and it could rise back to like five fifty. dollars um, So yeah, you might get another 10 cents. You probably get 10 cents every day on this stock, right? It's kind of makes sense. But it peaked at 547 today, and it was as low as 511. So if you day trade that shit, you get in. And when it goes up 20 cents, you get out. When it goes down 20 cents the next day, you get in. That's how I want you to trade a stock like that. You make 20 cents a day. You have 2,000 shares times 20 cents. That's what? $400 a day. That's great. All right. You guys are awesome. I will see people on the platform tomorrow. I've been doing a bunch of public Twitter. So, I mean, that shit, if I do something on public Twitter, it's pretty damn important. It means I want everybody to see it, all 5,000 people that don't even answer me when I ask them to, but I want them to see it. So if you see something on public Twitter, it means something. All right, have a great night.